So for our next talk, we have Penje to give us a talk on indexing entire 2.4 billion transaction on Ethereum in 10 hours. Let's welcome Penje on the stage. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Panjay. So I'm Thai. So as a Thai, uh, welcome to Bangkok and DevCon here in Thailand. All right. So uh, t today I'm. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, indexing entire uh, 2.4 billion transaction on Ethereum in 10 hours. Okay. Um, okay. Right now it may be like uh, 2.7 billion right now, but at the time it was uh, 2.4. Okay, let's get started. So when talking about uh, indexing on blockchain, uh, this is the con conventional way to do it. So you have a database that tracks uh, the latest block that you have processed, and then you, uh, uh, you you call the blockchain node and then get the data and then update the, that block and so on. So you loop this uh, uh, until you get the latest block, right? This is the conventional way to, to work on the blockchain indexer. But uh, looking on the product I'm working on is called AlphaTrace. Uh, this one, uh, we, we have some special requirements. Uh, we want to index like uh, all address in on the Ethereum since Genesis. And also we, we want to get all the ERC20 token events and then get those prices to get the what uh, is called PNL, the profit and loss. That's, uh, that's what we want. But how we do it? We cannot do it con in, in a conventional way because it would take forever, right? Uh, to, to read uh, those uh, 2.4 billion transactions and then uh, loop uh, one by one. So we need to uh, think, come up with a way uh, to do the indexer in large scale. So let's get back to the basic of the blockchain indexer. Actually, it's just uh, data processing, right? We've got uh, input. We've got, uh, then we put it into the process, and then we've got output. Yeah, so let's look into each component. What we need from the input to be uh, able to process it uh, in, at large scale is that we want it to be compact and structured. So this is the solution, because uh, Parquet gives us like uh, the compression. Uh, also, we have type in Parquet as well. C, C Parquet format is like um, CSV, but better CSV. And we found this project. This is a very good open source project. Uh, it read data on the Ethereum node and then write it into Parquet file. So that uh, when we want to process, we just uh, read uh, the file in, in our file system. That is very lightweight. We, we don't need to uh, call the node every time to get the data. Okay, let's talk about the process. How to do, how to do the process in uh, large scale. So we have to do it in, uh, in a parallel way, right? There are couples of uh, solutions. One is the Apache Spark, another is Apache Beam. Uh, we choose Apache Beam because uh, there is a many service on the cloud platform. And then output. When we have processed the data, we have to write it somewhere, right? So uh, that, that uh, destination that I have to write uh, need to be able to scale horizontally, meaning that uh, if I want to read a lot of and write a lot of data, I can just uh, create new instances, and then uh, I can read and write uh, more. There are a couple of solutions to do the uh, distributed data database. Uh, as you might guess that I selected the Google Big Table because I don't have to worry anything about infrastructure of the database. All right. Now, piece everything together 
and do some coding. This this uh, does not take uh, ten hours. In my, I, I mean the coding. Uh, it took me like uh, two three weeks uh, to work on uh, all the components and understand how Apache Beam works and actually write it. Uh, this is uh, what the final pipeline looks like. So data comes from the top and then uh, trickle down and then uh, get the result. And we wait around 10 hours. And it finished just like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, I, I, I uh, ran it and it took like around 10 hours to index all the Ethereum transaction all the uh, ERC20 token transfers. And there's something more on it because we only index uh, the current data, right? The big batch, very, very big batch of data and how to make it real time. So uh, I need to do it in a conventional way uh, to, to uh, update, uh, to get the new uh, blocks. And then because I, I don't need it to do at last scale anymore, right? I can just do it. A traditional way to make it real time. These are the numbers. Um, it cost me about uh, three hundred fifty dollars, and the number of the row that is written on the database in ten hours uh, was the uh, seven point one billion rec records. And I scaled the big table instance up to twenty instances. The good thing about big table is that when I finish. Uh, writing the data, I can scale it down. So after I finish uh, index those big data, I scale it down to just one to handle the normal read uh, operation. Yeah, that's, that's the good thing about uh, this whole thing. Yep, I think uh, that's all for me today. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so we can ask some questions in the audience. Uh, we can pass around the mic if there's any questions for Penche. Oh, we do. Oh, oh, awesome. We do have some questions on screen. So let's go through the first one. For ETH node, how did you host that to handle large read? All right. Um, for the in this process is the uh, is the. Uh, cryo, right? Cryo reads from the node, not not our not my indexer, right? So uh, we use Minute Service, and that is a dedicated uh, server to to read all the data. Yeah. All right. I guess we have one minute to take one more question. Uh, where are you reading the archive data from? How does reading from the node scale for you? Okay, fortunately, fortunately for my, for my uh, case, I don't need the archive data. I just need the transaction data, the logs, yeah, from, from the Ethereum node. That is just full node. It suffice. All right. Um, so I think that concludes our talk for okay. today. <laughs>